Welcome to the Superior Drummer 2.0 Overview Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to cover just the basics within this program. We won't get into any specific functionality in this video, but I would encourage you to check out the entire Superior Drummer tutorial series within drumangle.com for more detailed functionality on any given topic that we discuss in this video. So when you open Superior Drummer, the interface will load as you see here. At the very top of the screen, you have the option to click on various windows, depending on what you are wanting to configure. You have a drop down to load up any installed library, whether it be an Easy Drummer library or a Superior Drummer library. You have the combined preset menu, which allows you to save all settings that you configure throughout this plugin. You can save that as a preset that you can load at a later time within the plugin itself, or you can save it as a project so that you can send that file to other Superior Drummer users for them to load into their environment. Below that, within the Construct window, you have a standard and classic view toggle, which changes the main graphical representation of the drum set. In the standard view, you have a behind the kit view, which allows you to see all loaded drums. You can also click on the drop down menu and select from any drum that's currently available in the library that you have loaded. For example, right now we have the Near Z Custom. And I can choose this drop down and grab any other snare I want and it will automatically load the samples into memory. In the classic view, you have a typical velocity pad configuration where you can audition the drum at various velocities, as well as the drop-down menu as we did in the standard view. Next, within the construct window, we have the construct panel. This menu is going to change based on what library you currently have loaded. Each library has a default configuration that you can choose to load various portions of the library. For example, I can choose to load the full kit, which is going to load all available kit pieces within this library. Or I can choose to load the brush kit, which is going to automatically load a brush kit configuration. To the right of the Construct Kit menu, we have a Tool Setting menu. This allows you to select from various tools that were used in the sampling process if they are available for the particular library that you have loaded. Within the Avatar library, I have the option to load samples that were used with drumsticks, brushes, rods, or felt mallets. I can load samples for the bass drum that used a felt bass drum beater or a plastic bass drum beater, and I can also turn on or off the wire snares of the snare drum. Right now, everything is loaded using drumsticks, a felt bass drum beater, and with the snares enabled. I could go in and grab brushes, for example, and notice I have a few warning icons showing up, basically letting me know that the currently loaded drum instrument is not compatible with the tool setting I have selected. So typically you just have to open the drop down and find a drum that does not have an asterisk to load a drum with a brush sample in this case. I can use the felt mallets option and by default that is going to automatically disable the wire snares because in this library the mallets were recorded with the snares off. Next, we have the X drum section, which is designated in the instrument panel, which is in the upper right hand corner of the interface. Within this panel, typically it's going to show you a graphic icon as well as a name representing the drum you currently have selected. If I right click on various drums, I can make a selection and this window will update. If I open up the X drum panel, I have the option to add a new X drum, which means I can add additional kit pieces from the same library or from a different library. I can also toggle various tool settings. There's various MIDI key mapping configurations as well as microphone channel adjustments. Below the X drum setting, we have the envelope, which allows you to adjust the attack and the sustain of the entire kit of specific drums or of specific articulations. You can also adjust the aftertouch of a cymbal, which allows you to adjust the sound of muting a cymbal if you're using an electronic controller. We also have pitch adjustments that can be made for the entire kit, a specific drum or a specific articulation.
and we have humanized features that we can enable or disable. Now the humanized features are enabled based on the library you have loaded. They are there to make the Superior Drummer sampler sound as realistic as possible. In the bottom right hand corner, we have the second instrument panel. Within this instrument panel, we have a velocity pad where we can audition specific drums and articulations. We can adjust the overall volume of the entire drum or a specific articulation using the edit articulation only. We can adjust the key mapping. We can use the multiple hit emulation which basically smooths out samples generated in close proximity. And we have a learn function, which allows for quick note mapping when using various controllers such as a keyboard or electronic drum set. The voice and layers section allows for management of the various samples that are loaded for a particular instrument. You can adjust how many samples are actually loaded within the layer limits drop-down menu. For example, if we click on small, we're limiting how many samples are loaded, which will affect the total amount of memory needed for the entire kit. We have 443 megabytes loaded for this entire kit. If we go to the layer limits and choose unlimited, the total memory usage virtually doubles because we're loading every single sample possible within each layer limit group for this particular library. The voice limit acts as a polyphony setting and limits how many samples can still be playing at any given time. We have the master volume for the entire sampler itself, and then a play button as well, which will play internal MIDI grooves as selected within the groove window. We have the easy mixer, which provides a quick channel adjustment depending on what instrument is currently selected, and the easy mixer will follow your selection if you have this easy mixer follow selection function enabled within the settings menu. And then of course we have the memory and status window in the bottom left, which allows you to see how many samples are currently loaded in memory for the given library and any status messages with regard to those samples. If we jump to the mixer window, you can see that the very top window selection menu, the library menu, and the combined preset menu remain accessible as well as various panels at the bottom of the plugin. Everything else will change to the mixer window. Now the mixer within Superior Drummer is pretty extensive. You have EQ, filters, gate, compression, and a transient designer that you can use within each channel strip. Effect presets to be used and saved. Sidechain bus routing. Channel bus routing. Bleed control within each individual microphone, which allows you not only to configure what microphones are heard within each channel, but the actual relative mix between all instruments within each microphone as well. You have envelope adjustment, panning adjustments, phase reversal, solo and mute on a per channel basis. You can of course adjust the channel fade level and again you have various bus and output configuration settings as well. The grooves window allows you to audition various MIDI grooves that you may want to use in your productions. You have velocity adjustments, as well as halftime and double time adjustments that you can make to your MIDI prior to dragging that MIDI into your DAW. You also have the ability to just grab portions of the MIDI groove as well. The mapping window offers the ability to change the mapping of a particular drum, either manually or with the learn function. You can audition various articulations. You can layer various drums. For example, I can take this X drum, take the center articulation, drag it onto the MIDI key that I know is triggering my main snare drum. And create what's called a MIDI node so that now both of these samples will fire when we hit the configured MIDI note. So basically you can use MIDI nodes to layer multiple drums and you can even adjust the response or when those drums will actually be triggered based on incoming MIDI velocities. You can adjust individual MIDI velocity responses within the velocity curve, adjust the minimum and maximum velocity threshold that is allowed to fire, and even use a gate to completely eliminate any MIDI beyond a certain configured threshold. 
There are a number of presets available to make sure you're using the correct note mapping based on the controller you are using, as well as various hi-hat pedal control adjustments. The bounce window provides a variety of ways that you can record the MIDI of the performance, and although you cannot adjust the MIDI itself, you can output that MIDI into audio files that you can then bring into your DAW for further processing. The settings window has several settings that will modify various functions throughout the plugin and is also where you can load various libraries as well as backup locations in case the primary directory is inaccessible. And lastly, we have a help menu which provides access to the operation manual, the effects plugin guide, online support, and various other support options as well as specific details of each library and the MIDI layout. Now I've given you a very, very quick run through of all of the main windows within Superior Drummer. However, we haven't even scratched the surface of what this plugin is able to do. So I would encourage you to go to drumangle.com and check out the detailed tutorial series for Superior Drummer 2.0 for more insight on how to utilize this plugin for your productions.